Hello, welcome to Lei's Real Talk. I'm Lei. In my last episode, we talked about how Jiang Qing, aka Madame Mao, rose from a secondary movie star in Shanghai to the most powerful woman in China. Her marriage to Mao also changed how Chinese couples address each other. Because Mao was married, Jiang couldn't be called his wife. So the Communist Party gave her the title Ai Ren, which means lover. This title has influenced China for at least six decades, as the Chinese are calling their spouse lover instead of husband or wife. In the 1980s, when China first opened up, people from Taiwan and Hong Kong wondered why mainland Chinese all seem to be having an affair. This gender-neutral, revolutionarily progressive term degraded marriage in China. Although communists pretend to hold proletarians and the proletariats in high esteem, their leaders preferred taking educated women from wealthy bourgeois families as wives. But being married to the CCP leader can be the most unfortunate fate. Wang Guomi grew up in a distinguished family. Her father was a ministerial-level official and a diplomat in Jiang Kai-shek's government. Her mother was an educator. She spoke French, Russian, and English. And was the first Chinese woman to earn a master's degree in physics in China in the 1940s. She received full scholarships to study nuclear physics at Stanford University and University of Chicago. In 1945, to improve her English, she served as an interpreter for the American statesman George Marshall, who attempted to negotiate a truce between the nationalists and the communists. Afterward, she was torn between going to America to study physics. Or going to Yan'an to join the revolution. In the end, she chose revolution. Upon her arrival, two communist leaders showed romantic interest in her, and she became Liu Shaoqi's sixth wife. In the end, Liu was 23 years older than her. Liu later became Mao's chosen successor and the second most powerful man in China, holding the title of President of China, when Mao Zedong was the chairman of the party. I made a video about Mao's success, so you can check it out. In 1963, Wang Guomi accompanied Liu Shaoqi on a state visit to Indonesia, Burma, Cambodia, and Vietnam. It was the first time a CCP leader visited non-socialist countries, and the first time he was taking his wife with him. Wang's elegant outfits and cultured manner made her an international sensation, and she was called China's first lady. This, however, made Madame Mao extremely jealous. Mao Zedong rarely left China to go on state visits. Even when he did, he didn't bring her. Mao even rarely appeared with her in photos. This proved to be catastrophic for Wang Guomi during the Cultural Revolution. She was publicly humiliated and accused of being an American spy. The Red Guards attacked her for wearing high heels and necklaces. Madame Mao wanted to have her killed, and Mao Zedong eventually intervened. Wang ended up spending 12 years in prison. Meanwhile, her husband lost favor with Mao. He was called a traitor and tortured to death. Looking back, if Wang Guomi had taken the scholarship to study in the United States, the world would have had one more scientist. Her parents were very liberal and supportive of their daughter's decision to join the revolution. If they had known what she would go through, they would have told her to go to Stanford. The communists took advantage of young people's idealism of wanting to make a difference in society, and under the banner of social justice, lured them into their organizations. This is still happening today. Perhaps because of Wang's experience, the first ladies who came after her remained extremely low key. When they showed up at diplomatic functions, the CCP official media always addressed them as "wife of the chairman." They never used the term "first lady." By the way, the term "first lady" was very confusing to the Chinese people when first introduced in the 1970s. "First lady," when translated into Chinese, means "first wife." When President Nixon and First Lady Pat Nixon visited China in 1972. The Chinese thought Nixon had more than one wife, and he came to China with his number one wife. The first time the CCP official media used the term "first lady" was in 2013, when People's Daily reported Xi Jinping's first international tour with his wife, Peng Liyuan, after becoming the head of the state. 
Chinese state media called her the first lady, while Western media called Pun Communist China's first real first lady. Madame Xi is the first and the only Chinese first lady who became more famous before her husband did. Peng was a celebrity years before people knew who Xi Jinping was. At 16, Peng formally studied folk vocal music. When she was 18, she joined the Chinese People's Liberation Army as a performing arts soldier. She rose to fame at 20 when she appeared on national TV and sang at the Lunar New Year Eve Gala, the most watched TV event in China. She subsequently studied at China's Central Music Conservatory and became the first person to obtain a master's degree in folk singing. In 1986, when she was 24, someone arranged a date for her with a guy who was nine years older and the deputy mayor of Xiamen City. That guy was Xi Jinping. He had been divorced for a couple of years. To test whether she was a shallow man who only went after good looks, Peng intentionally wore baggy military pants at the date. It turned out she also dressed very casually. The first question he asked her was, how many singing styles are there? After she answered the question, he said, I'm sorry, I don't watch TV. What songs have you sung? Chinese media widely reported the story and said that Peng was impressed by Xi's sincerity and down-to-earth manner. The report also said that 40 minutes after meeting her, she knew that Peng was the one. Peng Liyuan enjoyed enormous popularity in China. The Guardian compared her stardom to Maria Carey's, but with a hint of Mao Zedong. She is a military singer and has the rank of a major general. When she became the first lady, she changed the old and unfashionable image of her predecessors. Some Western media call her Xi Jinping's best weapon in promoting China's soft power. Less than two years ago, Peng disappeared from the public eye, and rumor had it that she was disappointed in her husband over the sacking of Hong Kong, and she moved out. For a while, she acted solo. Last fall, Peng reappeared, and lately there has been talk that Madame Xi would enter politics. She attended China's 14th National Games with Xi Jinping in Xi'an last September and spoke at the UNESCO 2021 Awards Ceremony for Girls and Women's Education in October. She sent a congratulatory letter to the inauguration of the Juliet School's Tianjin campus later. State media heavily publicized her events. Last December, when she attended the 11th National Congress of the Federation of Literary and Art Circles, where her husband gave a speech, CCTV zoomed in on her face for a long six to seven seconds. Overseas Chinese media speculated her intention. Peng Liyuan has recently attended high-profile events and given interviews, a far cry from her earlier image of being invisible behind the scenes. Is this to build momentum for Xi's re-election, or is she following Madame Mao's example to pave the way for her political career? In a December 30th article, US-based Chinese media Secret China analyzed the internal strife at the top, which has reached the breaking point, and said the Jiang Zemin's faction intentionally made noises about Peng's involvement in politics with the goal of targeting Xi. By linking Xi's wife to Madame Mao, they want to depict Xi as having the same problem as Mao Zedong during his later years when he was lonely and had no one he could trust but his wife. News about Xi's wife attending a Politburo meeting and making a request to investigate the chain woman case in Xuzhou was also widely reported. Regardless whether it's rumor or truth, I think she should use her influence and popularity to help the poor woman. Let's learn the Chinese word love. Today, I also want to bring up the difference between simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese characters. You see, the traditional word for love has a heart in the middle, but the simplified Chinese word love doesn't have the heart. So when the CCP changed Chinese words from traditional to simplified, they also changed the meaning of words. They took the heart out of love. Love in mainland China became heartless. You've already learned the word 
or the character for people or person, which is 人 So 爱人 is lover. That's the Chinese term for spouse, unfortunately. But don't use it in China, even if it's acceptable. It's demeaning to your spouse. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you soon.